His legacy will last well beyond the final answer. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Regis Philbin moments. Not the groin, no! <laughs> for this list, we're looking at the moments that made Regis one of the most beloved personalities in popular media. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you'll go down in history. Number 10, WWE Interview, WrestleMania 7. Regis's interviews always proved entertaining, although few were as eccentric as his ones with WWE superstars. Joining me now, a superstar who makes his living on the fact that nothing, absolutely nothing lasts forever. I'm talking, of course, about The Undertaker. Professional wrestlers regularly dropped by his talk show, and in 1991, Regis served as a celebrity guest at WrestleMania 7. The longtime wrestling fan spoke with several superstars, but maybe the funniest exchange was between The Undertaker and his manager Paul Bearer. Regis was known for his lively interview style, making him a great comedic foil for two characters who relish in the macabre. A great day to be alive, wouldn't you say? This guy must be tall, I'm 6'3". Undertaker and Bearer don't have much to say, mostly ignoring Regis's questions. Regis does what he can to spark a conversation, but his efforts prove about as effective as trying to get a response out of Bearer's urn. I hope Alex Trebek is going to have a better time than me. Alex, how you doing? I gotta get out of here now. Number 9. I was De Niro, Little Nicky. Whenever the cameras were rolling, Regis brought such positive energy to the screen. However, we get to see a darker side of Regis and Little Nicky, although his signature optimism is still on full display. As Nicky's devilish brothers go around possessing people, all hell breaks loose in New York. This evil extends to Regis, who shares what starts off as a lighthearted anecdote. So I was driving to work today. Some bozo in a Cadillac cuts me off. So I followed him. The story takes a grim turn when Regis reveals that he bashed in another man's head like Robert De Niro in The Untouchables. His audience is naturally horrified, prompting an especially appalled reaction from one old lady. I was De Niro! What's happened to you, Regis? Regardless, Regis's chipper attitude hilariously contrasts his extremely wicked actions. Even when he's spreading anarchy, Regis is just so darn likable. Number 8. His Most Embarrassing Moment on Television – The Joey Bishop Show I would not like you to meet another hippie. <laughs> Are you all set? Regis Philbin! Before he was a household name, Regis Philbin was to Joey Bishop what Ed McMahon was to Johnny Carson. But while The Joey Bishop Show was Regis's first major gig, nothing could compete with The Tonight Show. It's not right! <laughs> This is nationwide television. Some of the higher-ups at ABC supposedly felt that Regis was holding Bishop back. Regis walked off the talk show for about a week, but he returned upon receiving encouragement from Bishop and the network. Years later, Regis revealed that his walk-off was part of a publicity stunt that Bishop cooked up in order to draw viewers away from The Tonight Show. Regis described this as his most embarrassing TV moment. I just decided I was going to just walk off the show and, and let them do whatever they wanted, because it was hurtful to hear that I'm holding this whole thing back. At least Regis got to take center stage in the talk show's final episode when Bishop walked off. Number 7. Regis the Bodybuilder – Regis Philbin's Lifestyles There's no denying that Regis was a good sport, a key example being when he welcomed bodybuilder Samir Banut onto his show Lifestyles. It's nice to have you here, okay. and it's all yours, Mr. Olympia. Okay. Go get him. With bulging biceps and a sturdy six-pack, Banut is undeniably the most athletic person in the room. This doesn't stop Regis from stripping off his shirt and trying to compete with a Mr. Olympia winner. You think I have a chance, guy? What do you think? <laughs> Set a camera, Frank. Let's okay, go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Flexing alongside Banut, it's clear that Regis will have to spend a lot more time at the gym and the tanning salon if he ever wants to catch up. Even if Banut is by far the more experienced bodybuilder, you can tell that Regis is having the time of his life. His willingness to poke fun at himself is precisely what made Regis such a wonderful host. How do you like my tan? He's getting there, huh? Number 6. All Taped Up – Live with Regis and Kelly There were times when Regis and Kelly Ripa felt less like co-hosts and more like a comedy duo. One of their best bits took place during Guinness World Record Breaker Week. To break a world record, Kelly must duct tape Regis to a wall in a limited time. I've got to duct, ta duct, tape, <laughs> duct tape Regis to this wall here in under 4 minutes and 22 seconds, and he's got to stay there suspended for 60 seconds once I'm done. Once strapped on, Regis has to remain on the wall for a solid minute. Regis has some snarky words for Kelly as she tapes him up. Hey, look, hello, little girl. I will duct tape your mouth. I don't want to have to do it, but I'll do it. So, it's not entirely unwarranted when she stretches a piece of tape across his mouth. 
Despite Kelly's best efforts, Regis doesn't stay suspended on the wall for very long. They might not break the record, but Regis's nervous expression throughout the ordeal made for a winning segment. Ah! <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, what a fun idea that was, Gilman. <laughs> the one you. record we didn't break this week. I Number five, Reg and Rickles, Various. Whereas Regis stood out with an upbeat attitude, comedian Don Rickles was a master of insult humor. How are you feeling, Don? None of your business. <laughs> Every time the two crossed paths, their opposite personalities made for a pitch-perfect odd couple. And maybe that's why they were friends for over half a century. There are many examples of their electric chemistry, and as you can expect, it doesn't take long for any encounter to become a comedy routine at Regis's expense. Remember the last time we talked, you said, Regis, I didn't know you were going to get this big? I can't believe it. Did you From have a little big... guy that was an announcer that followed me behind Joey Bishop saying, help me, help me. <laughs> I'm even bigger. You did. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Rickles pulls no punches. The funny man generally fires off so many insults per second that Regis can barely get a word in edgewise. When I'm in New York, I stay in the best. You're sitting here. Look at this. The, the, the pillows are gone. This is a magnificent hotel. Uh, you is... don't go for nothing, Regis. I know you were tight with the buck. You always have been. This is the presidential You're known as suite. Cheapy, cheapy Regis. Being a good friend of Rickles, though, Regis doesn't mind being the target of his jabs. If anything, Regis seems happy to play along, almost taking Rickles' insults as compliments. Number 4. On the Street with Borat, live with Regis and Kelly. Not all of Regis's interviews were confined to a studio. He often took his act outside. All right, how oh, are you? Regis nice to meet you. Nice to see you. What is your name? Regis. Regis. <laughs> One time, he even hit the streets with Pee Wee Herman, picking up some M&Ms along the way. Also memorable was when he gave Borat a taste of American life. The segment gets off to an appropriately awkward start as Borat feels Regis' hair and the two hold hands walking down the street. Shall we hold hands? Would you like to? Yeah. Oh, why not? Good, this would be good. Nevertheless, Regis remains in high spirits throughout and handles the Kazakh journalist better than most, although even he looks uncomfortable after slow dancing with Borat for a little bit. The two inevitably get around to talking about Kelly, which amounts to a clever punchline about how much Regis's co-host makes per year. Yeah, how much did you buy her for? Oh, let's see. What is it? Eight million a year? I don't know. <laughs> the segment closes out with another dance, as Borat refuses to let go of his new American friend. Number 3. The Best Burger in New York – How I Met Your Mother Of course I remember the place. It was the best burger I ever had! Regis has made his fair share of classic appearances on sitcoms, notably interviewing Kramer about his coffee table book about coffee tables. Did I tell you this guy was Bunkos? <laughs> Yet perhaps his most prominent TV cameo was on How I Met Your Mother. Regis and Marshall Erickson have both tasted what they consider to be the best burger in New York. Unable to remember where the burger joint is, the two spend years trying to find it to no avail. Seeing Marshall obsess over a burger is one thing, but seeing Regis become physically violent over it is another level of hilarity. Listen, Blondie! Oh, don't mess with me! Daddy needs his meat. I don't know where it is, Regis, I swear! Calling back to his Joey Bishop days, Regis walks off a game show when the gang tracks down the burger. There's a bit of a mix-up, but eventually, Daddy gets his meat. Hey, this is it! Yeah! Oh! Number 2. Regis Goes Green – Late Show with David Letterman Anyway, how do I look? Tell me! Oh, you look fine. We're doing on our show, Who we're doing cares? the week… <laughs> See what I mean? As a couple of pros in the biz, these two were longtime friends, with Regis Lee Philbin making frequent guest appearances on Dave's shows. One of their most memorable interactions was the time Regis decided to dress as everybody's favorite green ogre in a surprise appearance. Are you playing with my horn? <laughs> Get out of there! <laughs> Having previously lent his voice to Mabel, the ugly stepsister in Shrek the Third, Regis and Kelly were hosting the cast of Shrek the Musical when Mr. Philbin decided to get dressed up and drop in on his friend. Regis is completely unrecognizable under all that green makeup. Having such a distinctive voice, however, Letterman recognizes Regis once he opens his mouth. Hi, can I help you? Guess who I am? Oh my god. It's Guess Re who I am? It's, Re it's Regis Philbin. It's not Regis. Dressed like it's Shrek. Shrek. Given how uncomfortable the costume looks, we understand why Regis doesn't stick around for long. But even when making a brief walk-on, Regis provides comedy gold. I'll see you. Nice job. Thank you so much. Before we unveil our final answer, here are some honorable mentions. Take two with Phineas and Ferb, as if Regis couldn't be any more animated. You have any advice for us? Well, yeah, I think you guys could dress better. You know, a little class on the show. Sure. 
Uh, let me help you out here. Fur, little bow tie for you. And for you, Phineas, nice black tie. Hercules, Regis as Typhon and Kathy Lee as Echidna, a true power couple. Man, have I got the mother of all headaches. Somebody get me a bromo. Don't worry, I'll make it all better, pussy. Echidna? Where am I, baby? What's happened? Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, the first episode, History in the Making. Anyway, we're kind of excited about uh, having our show go national, and we're glad that you're with us as well. Hope and Faith, Handsome Hal. He's as honest as he is handsome. But if you need information about a great car, come on down to... Handsome Hal, he's as honest as he is handsome. Handsome Hal, he's as honest as he is handsome. The Morning Show, the New York Hardcore Interview. Okay, so you're a skinhead. You're not a skinhead, are you? No way. Well, what are you? Are you a punker? I'm just me. Just you. All right, fine. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the million dollar question, who wants to be a millionaire? While the name Regis Philbin will always be tied to talk shows, he was equally a giant in the game show world, having been both a host and a celebrity contestant throughout his career. As far as game shows go, though, Regis will forever be remembered for his time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. It's impossible to single out his best millionaire moment, whether it was the first time he coined his iconic catchphrase, Final answer? Final answer. Or his ecstatic reaction the first time a player won the million dollars. Well, my gosh. What can I say except, Debbie, you're going to Paris, and this is the final answer heard all around the world. He's won a million dollars. But not only was Regis an iconic millionaire host, he also sat in the hot seat himself. Revisiting the show during Meredith Vieira's tenure, Regis was asked a question that seemed tailor-made for him. Which of the following has never been the answer to a winning million-dollar question on the primetime version of Million? Okay, Wait a minute, I'm the host here. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Strangely enough, he got the answer wrong at first. Regis would answer correctly on his second try, but not before Vieira had a little fun with him. You're driving me crazy! <laughs> no. It's not? You're driving me crazy. It is the great thing. <laughs> a lot of guys really, I get the feeling, don't care whether you like that show or not, you know. Uh, I want people to enjoy what I do and, and understand what I'm doing is for their enjoyment. And uh, that's all I can ask for. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.